It's beer o'clock on Regal Ale Craft Beer. Today we've got a beer from Belfield Brewery that's based in Edinburgh in the United Kingdom. All their beers are gluten-free and are registered with a vegan society. And there's one other thing, they were set up by a group of friends in 2015. Well, that's what Untap said anyway. This is a two litre top that goes on the Krups Classic or Krups the Subcompact. I've got Krups the Subcompact. So we're gonna get into this. It's a 7.2% ABV, rich and warming porter. This is the first, being 7.2% ABV, that is as close as damn it as you're gonna to get to an Imperial Porter. This for me is the first Imperial Porter on the Krups. So I'm super excited. So I'm gonna show you how to fit it. And then we're gonna give it a pull. Inside of the cap. Don't throw this cap away without looking inside. You'll find a beer line. Grab all your beer line. <clears throat> the beauty of this is you get a fresh, clean beer line every time you fit a beer to your crepes. You just put it on the top there, push down, job done. That's it. I've waited a while for my crepes to go. Let's move it out the way. To go, to go green, it's been about half an hour or so. We'll just put the beer in. So load the keg from the back. Take your tap off. Actually, if you listen, Oh, better put the tap back on. That fan is lowering and lowering and lowering in sound. And I think I might have got this right. Well, wait a couple of seconds. Basically, what you want to do, really, ideally, with your beer, is let your machine go green. Let the light on your machine go green before you put a keg in. Pretty sure my, my machine was about to go green. Maybe we'll try a pour. Let's try a pour. So what you're gonna need to do now, pull some beer through that line. Just a little bit of beer. So what you've done, you've lowered the distance the beer needs to travel all the way down that line into your beer glass. It's going to make a big frothy glass of beer. None of us want that, do we? You've also wetted your glass by doing this. I'm going to try, I'm going to try a pour. I'm about ready to try a pour, I think. If it's a big frothy one, I'll stop and I'll come back when that light goes green, which is essentially what we really need to happen. But we're okay. Look at this. Look at that. Perfect, perfect pint. The other thing I wanted to suggest you do as well is that you put your top in the fridge overnight or probably 10 hours before you decide to put it into your machine. These machines, oh look, at the, the machine's gone green. I knew it was gonna go green. It, I just had that feeling about, I've used this machine now for years, so 
I've kind of got to the understanding of how this machine works. But anyway, yeah, we've got a green machine. We've got a green light on the machine. Um, put your keg in the fridge. Reason being, yes, the beer machine has a little cooling system in it to cool your beer, but you don't want to be overworking that cooling system, bringing the temperature from, from ambient temperature in the air around us to three degrees like the machine likes it. My fridge is set to five degrees. I don't like my beer overly cold, so I got this at about five degrees. Let the fridge do the work, not your little machine. So we got a one finger tan colored head. Looks great, this beer. Jet black beer in the glass. Let's get the aroma. First Imperial Porter on the crups. Chocolatey, roasty. Raisin, plum, fig, prune. The roasted malt is, is piling through as well in the flavour. Touch of vanilla, touch of coconut. A little bit of pipe tobacco smoke in there. <clears throat> Smells good. Smells really good. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. That's really, really good. A tad cold. If this was two degrees warmer, you'd really be getting those biscuity, nutty, roasty, toasty malts coming through. They're coming through, they are definitely coming through in the flavour. But the, the warmer your beer gets, the more flavour you're going to pull through. So maybe if I can just cradle this beer with my hands, wrap it up and try and warm it up slightly. That might make a difference. Drinkability. It's got a nice mouthfeel. It's got a good body to it. It's not overly thick, it's not overly creamy, at the same time it's not overly thin. It's got a nice mouthfeel to this beer. Flavour wise, the chocolate, the coffee, the caramel flavours are coming through brilliantly well. I like this, I like this for a porter, it's a really, really easy drinking porter this one. Not overly sticky, not overly thick, great drinkability, hoppy on the back end, that kind of plum and fig and prune flavours coming through, and a combination of the roasted malts in the beer, they clash with the, the more new world type hops that these brewers use, and instead of giving off like grapefruit and orange peel and fleshy blood orange, the roasted malt clashes with it and it gives off more of a raisin and a plum and a fig. But mix that with the roasted malt flavours, the chocolate, the coffee, the caramel flavours coming through. Slight bit of pipe tobacco smoke. A little bit of sweetness coming through from the, the biscuit malt in the beer. Followed by that nice balanced bitterness. You've got yourself a really good porter here. A really good porter. I'm going to drink a little bit more of this beer. Give the beer a wash round in the glass. And you can see the quality of the beer there in the glass as I roll it round. Fabulous. I'm ready to rate it. I really like it. I'm going to enjoy drinking this two litres. Probably have some at the Stone Crow Virtual Pub tomorrow night. Friday night. I'm reviewing this on a Thursday. Might release it today. Might release it on Friday. See how we feel. But I like that enough to give it... I'm going to go 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10 from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom!
Cheers.